In a late night court filing, Trump has pushed for his trial date in the federal classified documents case to be delayed until after the 2024 election. His attorney submitted a court filing on behalf of Trump and his co-defendant, Walt Nauta, writing, quote, proceeding to trial during the pendency of a presidential election cycle wherein opposing candidates are effectively, if not literally, directly adverse to one another in this action will create extraordinary challenges in the jury selection process and limit the defendant's ability to secure a fair and impartial adjudication. In other words, the Trump team is saying that their clients couldn't possibly get a fair trial, and so the only option here is to push the trial until after the election. What the Trump team isn't saying is that their goal by virtue of trying to push this trial until after the election is that Trump wins and then uses the levers of government to absolve himself of any accountability. Maybe he pardons himself, maybe the 25th Amendment is invoked and the vice president takes over and pardons Trump. Maybe Trump relies on a corrupt attorney general that he would appoint to scuttle the DOJ's own case against him. Whatever avenue he takes, the overarching strategy is clear. The point of waiting until after the election isn't to get a fair trial, it is to kill the trial. And this is a point that I discussed during our latest episode of my YouTube-only legal series with former federal prosecutor Glenn Kirshner, The Legal Breakdown. Glenn, to game this out, Let's just traffic for a moment in this dystopian nightmare and, uh, and, and temporarily raise everybody's blood pressure who's watching. But let's say that Trump wins in 2024 and he's convicted by both the DOJ and Fulton County for this crime regarding uh, pressuring Brad Raffensperger to find these votes. Uh, he would obviously pardon himself as far as the federal case goes, but is there anything he'd be able to do to evade accountability at the state level? Yeah, a good and scary question, the stuff of nightmares. So first of all, let me start with the federal pardon. I have to believe the Department of Justice would uh, cont would, would contest in court a self-pardon by a sitting president of the United States. I don't think- Just real real quick on that. Yeah. If Trump installs some some hardline lackey as attorney general, would, would that person be able to prevent the rest of the DOJ from fighting that in court? See, you just found the even more corrupt approach that Donald Trump has probably already thought of, right? One of the reasons we have to believe Donald Trump will try to push his federal trial date well into 2024, he'll probably try to push it until after the election because he'll be betting on winning the election, appointing a yet another corrupt attorney general and ordering him to dismiss the pending case against him. That is a different battle that would have to be fought. In theory, if a special counsel was still in place, Donald Trump wouldn't have the authority, at least not the lawful authority, to terminate the special counsel. So it gets very dicey. Um, but so I think that is a legitimate concern. And that's one of the reasons that that federal case needs to go to trial promptly. It needs to be resolved well in advance of the 2024 presidential election. But then going back to the pardon question, if Donald Trump is elected and tries to pardon himself because he already stands convicted, I think the Department of Justice would drag that into court and fight tooth and nail, you know, taking the position that a president cannot commit crimes with impunity and then pardon himself. If he could, you know, he could assassinate all of his political foes and if he was ever convicted, he could pardon himself for it. None of that makes any sense under sort of our constitutional construct. But then the next question is, OK, well, what about a conviction in Georgia? If he was elected president, what could he do about that? The good news is a presidential pardon power does not extend to, to state convictions. And there's some more good news. The governor of Georgia doesn't have the lawful authority to pardon people. So it looks like a Georgia state conviction would be pretty much bulletproof against any kind of presidential shenanigans. All of which is to say, there are certainly avenues that a corrupt defendant could take, and you'd be kidding yourself if you don't think Trump is gonna avail himself of every single one. And so now the question becomes, will the judge presiding over this case, Judge Aileen Cannon, rule in Trump's favor or not? And on that point, there's no way to know what she'll do. I would just say up front though, that if she does opt to grant the Trump team this request, it would be the single most blatant sign of corruption you could possibly conjure up from this case. If that gift would be any more obvious, she'd have to hand it to the Trump team wrapped in a bow. It would dwarf the already obvious interference that she ran on Trump's behalf when she tried to sabotage the DOJ's efforts to investigate Trump for the very documents at question in this case by appointing a special master to review those documents that the FBI sees from Trump. She claimed that Trump deserves special treatment because, quote, as a function of plaintiff's former position as president of the United States, the stigma associated with the subject seizure is in a league of its own because, 
No one is above the law, except apparently when Judge Cannon decides that Trump is. It was a ruling so erroneous that the conservative U.S. Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit rebuked her, writing, the law is clear, we cannot write a rule that allows any subject of a search warrant to block government investigations after the execution of the warrant, nor can we write a rule that allows only former presidents to do so. And yet, even still, that action by Judge Cannon would pale in comparison to the prospect of her actually granting this request by the Trump team to delay the trial until after the 2024 election. With that said, keep in mind, we're still in the pretrial period. If Judge Cannon did pull a stunt like this, the DOJ still has the opportunity to request that she recuse herself from this case. And if she refuses, the Justice Department would then have the opportunity to seek her removal and replacement from this case by appealing to the same appeals court that had already rebuked her for her initial interference. And so given the fact that she's already skating on thin ice and that any efforts to so blatantly help the Trump team may very well signal the end of her presiding over this case, she'll probably actually exercise at least a little discretion here. Is that a guarantee? Not at all. But what is almost certain is that she'd make her life pretty damn difficult if she does try to help Trump by delaying the trial. With that said, even if Trump doesn't get the postponement that he's seeking, that doesn't mean that his attorneys won't still try to delay this thing with a raft of pretrial motions for expressly that purpose. As of now, the DOJ has requested a December 11th, 2023 start date, but the Trump team actually opposed that move, hoping instead for something later. And so if they can't get Judge Cannon to agree to their plan outright, they're still certain to try and introduce motion after motion after motion to try to get their delay through other means. And of course, let's not forget why the Trump team is so desperate to avoid this case. Because Trump has no defense. Because the fact is that we know Trump stole classified documents, that he refused to return them when asked, that he defied subpoenas from the National Archives, that he had his lawyer issue a false attestation claiming that all of the documents had been returned when they hadn't, that the FBI eventually executed a search warrant that turned up everything he pretended not to have, and that he was even caught on tape admitting to having classified documents. Wait a minute, let's see here. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. I just found, isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know. Mm -hmm. Except it is like highly confidential, yeah. secret. <laughs> this is secret information. Yeah. But look, look at this. You attack and... Hillary would print that out all the time, you know. So not for nothing, if I was Donald Trump, I'd probably do everything I could to delay this trial too. Because once it starts, it is highly unlikely he'll figure out a way to avoid conviction. With that said, his prospects in other cases are just as grim. Remember, aside from this federal indictment for stealing classified documents, he's also indicted in the Manhattan DA case for his illegal hush money payouts to Stormy Daniels, among a raft of other charges. He's awaiting another indictment by the Justice Department for charges related to his efforts to steal the 2020 election and the events surrounding January 6th. He's awaiting indictment in New York Attorney General Tish James' $250 million civil suit against him, his kids, and his business for fraud. And he's contending with yet another defamation lawsuit from E. Jean Carroll, which was recently amended to include more disparaging comments that Trump made during his CNN town hall. So if you're wondering why he's so desperate to make this Hail Mary play of winning the election and then wiping his own slate clean, it's because otherwise he may very well spend the rest of his life in a prison cell. So at this point, all eyes are on Judge Cannon, and here's to hoping that she feels the white hot glare of the world's attention trained on her, because that should hopefully dissuade her from doing anything that could be viewed as helping Trump. Because if she interferes on his behalf again, she may very well end any likelihood of presiding over this case any further. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.